Well, I'm so grateful that you joined us today for our Tuesday Bible study. Let us begin with prayer. Holy Father, we thank you again for this day and pray you open up our hearts to your word. For it is in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. So today we're going to be look, taking a look at Paul's book uh, to the Galatians. And we really haven't had that opportunity to do too much with Galatians. But I hope you will be inspired by it. We are actually looking at some favorite topics, I think, of Americans. One is freedom. Because you know, we're all about that in America. And then, of course, self. We're all about that, too, because these two, at least in our opinion, in the United States, go hand in hand. It's all about me and my freedom and what I do for me and what I want. And uh, we have a real big misunderstanding of what freedom is all about. Let me start by this. In, in, in Christianity, we kind of co-opted uh, this thing called the liberal arts education. This is something that actually dated all the way back to uh, the Greeks. And the Greeks believed that to be a well-rounded person, you needed certain foundational things in order to be a successful citizen. So liberal, the word liberal actually has to do with freedom. This is what the word liberal means. It means freedom. Uh, but in their case, you learned certain things to be free to serve the state. Christianity picked up on this, and Christianity uh, in the medieval times developed uh, a very, what we call the classical liberal arts education. And maybe you've been to a Christian school or a Christian college, university, and they really emphasize the liberal arts education as a foundation for being free, to be liberal, to be free from self. You see, that is what the real liberal arts education is about. How do we set ourselves free from ourself? See, in the United States of America, we think that freedom is all about freedom to serve ourselves, but in Christianity, it's to be free from ourselves. That's what that word means, and that's what, uh, what, that, uh, what a liberal arts education. How do we free ourselves from ourselves so we might be of service to God? Interesting. Probably didn't know that. Little tidbit for you today. But that's an important thought as we take a look at Galatians chapter 5. St. Paul writes these words. For freedom... Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Well, we get the concept of being free, of being in bondage to something. And of course, in this case, we are in bondage to this thing called S-I-N. We're in bondage to sin. I know it's not a popular word today, but sin, we need to understand, is any type of brokenness in our relationship that destroys our relationship with God and with other people and with our planet. When I say destroyed, it's not just, oh, it's a little broken, it needs a little bit of super glue. It's shattered, okay? There's nobody that can put this back together again except for God. And so God has somehow taken the pieces of this shattered uh, pottery <laughs> of these relationships that we have broken and somehow made something brand new out of it. Maybe a fresco of some sort. I don't know. We're just going in and carrying on with this imagery and art imagery and so forth. But the point is, sin destroys something beautiful. God has set us free so that we no longer destroy these things beautiful. But remember, sin is all about relationships, right? How we relate to one another. This is what sin is about. Our relationship with each other, our relationship with God, our relationship with the planet. So it's all about relationship. So certainly when the Bible talks about freedom, it's not saying you're free to go do what you want, pound my chest. We're free. We're set free from ourselves. Our sin that breaks relationship so that we might once again, we're restored to the way God envisions us to live our lives. 
I don't think Americans get that concept of freedom. It's all about me. Freedom is all about us. We are free from ourselves to serve one another. Did you ever think of freedom that way? Probably not, because you've been so infected with this disease of this American disease of individuality that is not Christian at all. It has nothing to do with Jesus. We're seeing this play out all the time in our politics, don't we? And in our world. Let's go on. I'm laughing, but it's a sad laugh because unfortunately it's taking a toll on many people in our country. This idea of individual freedoms at the expense of other people. We go on, verse 13. Um, you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters, so do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. Isn't that what we just said? Freedom is freedom from self. Let me write this down because you need to keep this in mind for a lesson today. Freedom from self. This is the freedom, which in other words, sin, self-destructiveness, destruction of our relationships. This is what Paul is talking about. This is what the Bible envisions. Not an American style of freedom, freedom to do what we want. Much different concept in the Bible what freedom is. Freedom, brothers and sisters, do not take your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love, become slaves to one another. Wait a minute, I thought I was set free. You were set free from yourself to be a servant of other people, to be slaves to one another. But it's a bondage that is done with kindness. If you know I'm your slave, you're my slave, hey, you know, we take care of each other. We submit to one another. That's what the Bible's vision is of marriage and a relationship. If you take a look at Paul, Paul says in Ephesians, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Well, then who's the boss? See, we think in this, <laughs> that type of relationship, who's on top? Well, God's on top. God's in charge, okay, of our human relationships. We submit to one another. Paul goes on. <sighs> For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. One law, Paul says, love one another. You know, I've, I've been on this kick, and I, I know I, you might get annoyed with this, but it bears repeating. I already mentioned to you one of the major problems with our United States is we have a very sick and twisted view of what freedom is. We think freedom is all about self. Myself. And we call this a Christian, at least some people do, I don't. We call it a Christian nation. The U.S. is not a Christian nation. It's never been a Christian nation, never will be a Christian nation. And I can prove that to you very simply. To be Christian means that we follow one law. Love one another as we've been loved by God. Is that the law of the land in the United States of America? Don't think so. How many laws are on the book? If you have to put more than that law on the book, it's not a Christian nation. If you've got to put, put, a, put a, a law in there about how you're supposed to drive and how fast you ha have to go, and you have to put a law in there about not murdering one another and because killing is somehow bad or thought to be bad, then you can't be a Christian nation. Christian nation doesn't need those types of laws. It only needs one, love one another. 
Oh, and by the way, if it's a Christian nation, it doesn't even have to be written because it's written in our hearts. It's at the direction of the Holy Spirit. Is that what happens in the United States? If that's not what happens in the United States, it is not a Christian nation. It has not ever been, never shall be, cannot possibly be a Christian nation if it has more than one law on the book, love one another. And as soon as you write it down, it ceases to be love, doesn't it? But the other thing is we have a very sick concept of freedom. We think again of freedom from, for, self, for doing our, our service to ourselves. Again, wrong understanding. We are a Christian. We need to understand that we have a very countercultural view of what freedom is all about. Freedom is not about service to myself. Freedom is about service from myself in order to be serviced to you. Why? Well, that's probably enough for today. I hope I've given you something to really wrestle with. Our citizenship in the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the United States of America are at odds with one another. They're not the same thing. We need to keep these things clear. It is okay to be a patriotic citizen in the United States of America. I love our country, despite its foibles and faults. But we're not a Christian nation. We're Christian people living in a secular country and we need to be countercultural and revision what it means to be free. Freedom to be of service to one another. Freedom from self so we might care for those around us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this lesson today. Not what we want to hear, but boy, I'll tell you, this is what we need to hear as a country. This is why we have so many conflicts. Everybody's pounding their chests about their own freedoms. But God, in the kingdom of heaven, freedom is freedom from self. So we ask that you would set us free from bondage to ourselves, that we might be a service to you, to those around us, to your kingdom. For he asks us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Ooh, all right. A lot of implications about this lesson today, and I hope you would take what you learned and apply it to some of the debates going on. You know we are in massive debates right now in the United States of America, and people are ready to, are so angry with each other right now, aren't we? I'm asking you not to be binary in your thinking. That means don't only think about your perspective. Think about the perspective of others. Because we might find that sometimes the truth is somehow we can come up with, with a collaboration together. Because we are in service to one another. Not just to our own tribes, our own peoples. We are in service to each other. So I'm inviting you to really try to apply how do I be in service to those around me, especially with those with whom I disagree? Then I think you might understand this lesson. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.